peace actually is not so much mourning for the dead as much as it is a hopeful peace. It's a peace about love. It's a peace about something spiritual that has nothing to do strictly with a kind of traditional understanding of, of what Requiem is, which is a mass for the dead. It's actually a, a mass for the living, if one can say so, but a mass not in a kind of a grave, resigned way, but spiritually optimistic way. Um, it might be a good hint for people who listen to it to think of it as a dedication to somebody very close. In Brahms's case, he dedicated it to his mother. That already shows you the type of forces that, that were at work when he was thinking about the piece. <laughs> It's the first time um, I work with Ludovic, and, and I must say that it's, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, he has an uncommonly suitable timbre for this particular music. It sounds honest, sounds powerful without a pathos and without the kind of a false drama. You somehow listen to him and you believe immediately what he's saying. I'm very useful long to to, uh, to listen to Brahms music. This is one of my favorite composers. Not, not only the, the, the Requiem, but uh, the, the whole the whole Brahms music, chamber music or symphony music. Um, and it was always, uh, I mean, the Requiem was always um, a score that was very attractive to me, very very touching and very mysterious. Also, because it's kind of strange piece of music inside. Uh, quite unexpected, uh, even for Brahms. For the part I have to sing, uh, this is requiring um, a certain color of the voice uh, to be able to express uh, the drama and the deepness of the, of the, the words you are speaking and sometimes spitting, you know. Uh, and um, I just began uh, to, to sing uh, this, uh, this beautiful score and beautiful music 15 days uh, ago in Paris with Gabriel France and uh, it's it's quite short actually but fortunately because I was hearing it uh, for long at home on CDs and many many versions uh, I got um, I got a certain habit you know of, of, of this atmosphere and um, probably it was helping me very much to 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 feel um, pretty quick uh, able to, to fit uh, the, the whole atmosphere of the piece.
that you feel when you conduct a German orchestra, a good German orchestra. The understanding of how that music works is, is sort of genetically imprinted in them. When we were rehearsing without a chorus, a lot of orchestra members, I could see their mouths to saying the words that the chorus would say because they know this music from from beginning of their lives. They all have probably sung it in a youth choruses. They have probably had experiences where they have learned it themselves. Th something about a German orchestra playing Deutsches Requiem, just like you notice a German audience is listening to Deutsches Requiem, they identify with it in a, in a way that I don't know anybody else identifying with it. So of course it, they are the very ground, the, the very basis for the for this recording because I feel they add really the, 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 the understanding and affinity for this particular work. We certainly have what I believe and many other believe the best chorus uh, in the world right now. The Swedish radio chorus is really an exceptional chorus, a chorus with with such high training and such perfect voicing and balances and, and just musical understanding. And I, am, I think that probably it would be hard to find a better chorus uh, anywhere. There is nothing one can really say about Natalie Dessay because she's such an expressive and individual artist. It means so much to her and it is so obvious when she sings that, that every fiber of her body is, is, is involved in what she's doing. And the type of intensity and involvement, how she approaches this music is so contagious that everybody else becomes involved. Um, even even more than they were before. Maybe I can do that. 
I find working with her just a joy, pure joy. We, it's the second project we have done together, the Mahler uh, 2 uh, was the first one, and it's also coming out, I think, in Virgin soon. Seeing a person of this artistic caliber being so wonderfully self-critical and so tough on herself on ev because she wants, to, she wants perfection, she wants it to be right. I identify with people like that. I feel close to people who are not happy with themselves all the time, but constantly know that there is always a better way of doing things. And, and she's a good example of how she's always searching. What's interesting about Brahms' music in general is that when you start looking at his symphonic music and choral music, you very seldom have a little door open that goes inside Brahms as a person. He keeps everybody at the arm's length. There is a certain distance. It's always very expressive. It's always very emotional. It's always full of melancholy and beauty. But somehow you don't find Brahms a man in it. He, he manages to keep himself at a distance. In this work, there are moments where I feel there are moments where he, he, you, he reveals himself, his own personal side. And I find that very, very touching about this piece. For me, it is a matter of fact that Brahms is full of a uh, of energies and uh, I would say natural energies, the energy of nature. The, the, you, you can hear in, in, in the symphonies wind blowing, uh, you, can, you can feel 
natural color of, of a forest or mountains, and uh, if you have enough imagination. And um, it's kind of, I mean, to listen to Brahms for me, it's, it's just like to, to wander around, you know, in a beautiful natural place, um, let's say in a beautiful mountain and a beautiful forest. Uh, this, is, um, this is filling uh, your soul uh, with beautiful things and colors. And uh, that's for me why uh, this music and specifically the, the Requiem is touching pretty directly the, the, the public. And uh, if you can feel um, with this magic that you can, you can have in this music, those beautiful natural colors, it comes to you and touch you naturally.